there are five common mistakes that prevent the majority of Americans from becoming wealthy. The first reason why people don't become wealthy is because it never occurs to them that it is possible for them. They never take any of the steps necessary to make it a reality. The second reason that people don't become wealthy is that they never decide to. Even if it occurs to a person that he could become wealthy if he just did certain things in a certain way, if he doesn't decide to take the first step, he ends up staying as he is. The third reason that people don't become wealthy is procrastination. Even if it's occurred to a person that they can become wealthy and they have made a decision to change, procrastination will push all their plans into the indefinite future and nothing will ever happen. The fourth reason that people retire poor is what economists call the inability to delay gratification. If you cannot delay gratification and discipline yourself to refrain from spending everything you make, you cannot become wealthy. The fifth reason that people retire poor is perhaps as important as a lack of time perspective. The amount of time that you take into consideration when planning your day-to-day -day activities and when making important decisions in your life. People with long time perspective almost invariably move up economically in the course of their lifetimes. Money flows away from those who use it poorly or who spend it in non-productive ways. Here now are the absolutely unbreakable laws of money. Number one is the law of abundance. We live in an abundant universe in which there is sufficient money for all who really want it and who are willing to obey the laws governing its acquisition. Your attitude of either abundance or scarcity toward money will have a major impact on whether you become rich or not. Individuals become wealthy because they believe they have the ability to become wealthy. They consistently do the things that turn their beliefs into realities. Why aren't you rich already? This is an important question to ask yourself. Your answers will expose your self-limiting beliefs, your doubts, your fears, your favorite excuses, your rationalizations, and your justifications. Write down all the reasons you can think of. Whatever your reasons or excuses, you can now get rid of them. The world is full of hundreds and thousands of people who have had far more difficulties. They've gone on to be successful, and so can you. Number two. Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law is one of the best known and the most important laws of money and wealth accumulation. This law says that no matter how much money people earn, they tend to spend the entire amount and a little bit more besides. No matter how much they make, there never seems to be enough. The first corollary of Parkinson's Law says, financial independence comes from violating Parkinson's Law. It is only when you develop sufficient willpower to resist the powerful urge to spend everything you make that you begin to accumulate money and move ahead of the crowd. The second corollary of Parkinson's Law is this. If you allow your expenses to increase at a slower rate than your income increases and you save or invest the difference, you will become financially independent in your working lifetime. From this point onward, resolve to save and invest 50% of any increase you receive in your income from any source. This still leaves you the other 50% to do with as you desire. Number three, the law of three. There are three legs to the stool of financial freedom. Savings, insurance, and investment. To be fully protected against the unexpected, you require liquid savings equal to two to six months of normal expenses. The very act of saving this amount of money and putting it into a high yielding savings account or a money market account will give you a tremendous sense of confidence and inner peace. The second corollary of the law of three says that you must insure adequately to provide against any emergency that you cannot pay for out of your bank account. Always carry sufficient insurance to protect yourself against an emergency that you cannot write a check to cover. And without adequate insurance, you are taking risks that you simply can. Your ultimate financial goal should be to accumulate capital until your investments are paying you more than you can earn on your job. This seems like a very simple lifetime planning strategy, 
but it's remarkable how few people follow it and how many people end up at the age of 65 with very little put aside. Number four, the law of the compound interest. When you let money accumulate at compound interest over a long enough period of time, it increases more than you can imagine. You can use the rule of 72 to determine how long it would take for your money to double at any rate of interest. For example, if you were receiving 8% interest on your investment and you divided the number 72 by 8, you would get the number 9. This means that it would take you 9 years to double your money at 8% interest. The key to compound interest is to put the money away and never touch it. Though you spend only a small amount today, you will be giving up what could be an enormous amount later on. If you start early enough, invest consistently enough, never draw on your funds, and rely on the miracle of compound interest, it will make you rich. Begin a regular monthly investment account and commit yourself to investing a fixed amount for the next 5, 10, or even 20 years. Number 5, the law of magnetism. The more money you save and accumulate, the more money you attract into your life. The more positive emotions you associate with your money, the more opportunities you will attract to acquire even more. The first corollary of the law of magnetism as it applies to money is that a prosperity consciousness attracts money like iron filings to a magnet. This is why it is so important for you to start accumulating money, no matter what your situation. That money, magnetized by your emotions of desire and hope, will begin to attract more money to you faster than you can imagine. You'll be amazed at what starts to happen. The more time you take to think intelligently about your finances, the better decisions you will make and the more money you'll have to think about. Law number six of accelerating acceleration. The more money you accumulate and the more success you achieve, the more and faster money and success seems to move towards you from a variety of different directions. Fully 80% of your success will come in the last 20% of the time that you invest or put in. You'll achieve only about 20% of the total success possible for you in the first 80% of the time and money that you invest. You'll achieve the other 80% in the last 20% of the time and money that you invest. To the greatest discovery of the 20th century, the discovery of the self-concept. And this self-concept is a combination of all your thoughts, feelings, beliefs, doubts, hopes, fears, and experiences throughout your entire life that come together to make you the kind of person you are today. How you perform and behave on the outside, how you treat with other people, what you accomplish is all determined by your internal programming. We also know that each person has a series of mini self-concepts. What they have found is that every person has a self-concept which is like a thermostat. And this self-concept with regard to money, you never go more than 10% above or below your self-concept level of income. If you earn 10% or more below your self-concept level of income, you engage in what are called scrambling behaviors and you scramble to get your income back up. But once you're into that 10% range, well, plus or minus, you relax. And this becomes your comfort zone. And the great enemy of human success is the comfort zone. The only way that you can increase your income is to change your self-concept in relationship to income. Your overall self-concept is determined by your self-concept in all the areas of your life that you consider important. Is that your self-concept is made up of three parts. Number one, it's made up of your self-ideal. Your self-ideal, like three wedges of a pie, consists of your values, it consists of your ideals, it consists of your goals, it consists of your hopes, it consists of your dreams, it consists of all those things that are inside you. There's a direct relationship between how clear you are about your goals and ideals and your self-ideal. What do we know about top people? Top people are clear about what they believe in and they don't compromise their values. What do we know about little people, weak people? Is they're very confused about their values and they compromise them for the slightest advantage. Uh, the second part of your self-concept is called your self-image. Your self-image is the way you see about yourself and the way you think about yourself. Your self-image is called your inner mirror. Whenever you go to do anything, you check this mirror. Before you go in to see somebody in a sales call, you just kind of check your inner mirror to see, how do I perform in sales calls? 
and your performance on the outside is largely determined by your self-image. Remember, most people look at a mirror. Intelligent people realize that whatever they see in their outer world is coming from themselves. So they always ask this great question, is what is it in me? The average person always tries to blame something in their external environment or someone, past, present, future. The third part of your self-concept is your self-esteem. Your self-esteem is the most important part of all. This is the emotional part of your personality. Whenever your self-image, your personal performance, is consistent with your self-ideal, the person that you would most like to be, your self-esteem goes up. Whenever you do something that's not like you, you blow up, you get mad, uh, you swear, you do something that, you know, that's not consistent with the best person you could be, your self-esteem takes a hit. Whenever you say the words, I like myself, your overall self-concept goes up. Your self-image improves and your self-ideal clarifies. And as your self-image, as your self-concept goes up, your performance and your behavior in every part of your life goes up as well. So if you keep repeating, I like myself, I like myself, what happens is eventually it becomes a habit of thinking. You wake up in the morning and say, I like myself. Throughout the day you say, I like myself. Somebody's rude or difficult to you say, ah, it doesn't bother me, I like myself. And you act like it. Initially, it'll be like getting fit, your muscles will be stiff, but after a while it starts to become automatic. And whenever you have any kind of negative event, you can immediately zap it by saying, oh, wait a minute, I like myself. But here's the most wonderful thing. The more you like yourself, the more you like other people. And the more you like other people, the more they like you right back. And what do you think is the foundation of self-confidence? How much you like yourself, self-esteem. The more you like yourself, the higher your level of self-confidence. The more you like yourself, the less you feel fa your fear, failure, and rejection. In other words, things don't bother you because you actually develop almost like a Teflon cover around your emotions and you become a completely positive person. In the 60s, there's that poster that says, I do not love you for yourself, but for the way you make me feel when I'm with you. Do you know the most powerful thing you can do in your relationships with other people is to make them like themselves? Is to say things and do things with them, not manipulatively, but positively, that cause them to like themselves. If you go through the world, sort of like a hummingbird going from flower to flower, making people feel important, making people like themselves, you'll be one of the most popular people there is. But you can't give away something you don't have. You can't make other people feel good about themselves unless you feel good about yourself. But if you really like yourself, you spontaneously and naturally do and say the things that cause other people to feel good about themselves. And when you talk to yourself in a positive way, your self-confidence goes up, your self-esteem goes up, your relationships improve, your sales will go up. All you need to do to raise your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and your level of attainment high is to have an absolutely crystal clear goal and work on it every single day. Psychologists recently have concluded as you feel yourself moving towards something that is important to you, your self-esteem and self-confidence go up. Whenever you think of something that makes you unhappy or negative, you swing your thoughts off them and you think about your goal and you work on your goal because your mind can only hold one thought at a time and if you're totally determined to achieve a single goal and you think about it and work on it every day, eventually all the other things will fall away. There's a wonderful line, when you turn toward the sunshine, the shadows fall behind you. We, in our advanced coaching programs, we teach people to write down and, and create goals and plans. Once they've done it all, 90 days later they come back, I say, how many of you reviewed your goals and plans in the last 90 days? Most of them didn't do it. How many of you achieved your goals and plans? All of them. But the most amazing darn thing, because by writing them out, they've programmed them into their subconscious mind, which then works 24 hours a day to bring it into their lives. Now here's the key. Do not refer to the previous day. What you do is you turn it over and you rewrite your goals again today. When you first write down 10 goals, they will be the first things that occur to you. The next day, when you write them down without reference, you will change the order. So you'll find yourself writing the goals differently and in different order and sequence. Then, one by one, they'll start to be achieved and replaced by a new goal. A year from now, you will have accomplished so much, it will be astonishing to you. All it takes is five minutes a day. And it's really a test of how much you really want those goals is do you have the discipline to rewrite them every day? If you will do that, that front loads the entire success process. You know, the very act of writing goals raises your self-esteem, it improves your self-image, it increases your self-confidence, and it activates your creative mind. You start to see all kinds of ideas and ways to achieve the goals that you've written. It's literally life-changing, that one technique. I have never written a goal that I didn't achieve. And I've gone from literally from rags to riches. Uh, and it was exactly what I wrote down. Write down what you want and make it clear so that the universe can help you get it. Create within your mind the mental equivalent of what you would like to see on the outside. If you will do that, all the mental laws that we've talked about and many more that we haven't had a chance to go into and what you want will appear on the outside by the law of, 
it's cause and effect, <laughs> belief, <laughs> expectation, attraction, correspondence, and so on. Take a clean piece of paper when you get home and you're going to write down 10 goals. And these goals, you, you can write more than 10 if you like, but you must write a minimum of 10. These goals are one year goals, approximately. You write them in the present tense as though a year has passed and you are reporting they've already been achieved. I have taken people through this exercise all over the world once. And I come back a year or two years later and they say the same words in every language. You won't believe what's happened to me. You won't believe it. I found those goals in something a year later and you won't believe what's happened to me. I've accomplished all the goals. When you write down a goal, you activate three learning modalities. The visual, you can see it. The auditory, you sub-vocalize it, you say it to yourself. And the kinesthetic, you write it. All three together, and it goes straight into the subconscious mind. You just go on with the rest of your life, and 24 hours a day, this great superconscious mind is working to bring the goal into your life. When you get a chance, you sit down and you write this goal at the top of a page and you set a deadline for the goal. When you get up in the morning, you think about the goal. When you go through the day, you think about the goal. Whenever something gets you off track, you stop with it, think about the goal. Because the goal is always inherently positive. When you think about the goal, you become happy. You move toward the goal, you feel powerful. You feel like a winner. You feel like you're in control of your life. And once you know you can do anything you put your mind to, your self-confidence will go through the roof.